The Bible says that we overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. How many here know that we all have a testimony? Because if God have allowed us to wake up this morning, clothed in our right mind, that's a testimony. Because he've allowed us to make history on today. He have allowed us to see a day that we haven't seen all the days of our lives. And that's something to be thankful for. Is anybody thankful on today? Amen. Amen. How many know that there is a divine goodness at the bottom of every sin? And behind every sin stands the goodness of God. But in order to experience that goodness, we have to have a relationship with the Father. And the only way we can have a relationship with the Father is through his Son. And once we have experienced that man we call Jesus, once we have experienced him, then there's a certain connection or there's a certain bond that takes place. I like to call it the bond of fatherhood. That bond takes place. It's kind of like a father and son relationship. In the book of Romans, the second chapter, the fourth verse, it says that... Um, <clears throat> The book of Romans, the second chapter, the fourth verse, it says, For uh, sometime God will allow us uh, to do things. And it's not so much as what we do or how we do it, but a lot of time he allows us to do things just to get us into his grace. How many know that? So in Romans, the second chapter, it says, For it is the goodness of God that leadeth thee to repentance. Now understand, he don't make us repent, but a lot of the time he allows circumstances and situation, co-pastor, to happen in our lives to get us on the road to repentance. When I, when I was nine years old, my father died, and my, my father was kind of like the hope of the family. He, he was a professional boxer, and I believe had he not died, he may have been the heavyweight champion of the world. But after my father died, there was a certain emptiness in me. You know, I didn't know my father very much. He died when I was real young. But after he died, there's a part of me died as well. I went into a dark place. I began to wrestle with death. I can remember in my mama's house with a, a 357 to my head playing Russian roulette I didn't want to live anymore you know there was a certain deepness in me that I just didn't have a desire to live and this is kind of hard for me because it's taking me back this this happened many years ago you know um, God would do things that would lead us in, 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 into that place of glory you know so you know after my father died I, I got angry. I got mad at him for dying and leaving me. And then all of a sudden, I built up all this anger, all this hatred, and all this regret. You know, I didn't care anymore. You know, I cared about no people, nobody. I did some things, folks, that I'm not going to sit up here and tell you because if I told you, you wouldn't, you probably would leave out this place. You know, but after my father died, I was mad at him and I was angry at him for dying and leaving me. So, you know, I built up this anger and resentment and hatred. So by the age of 14, I joined a gang and been in a lot of situations and seen a lot of things that most 14-year-olds shouldn't have seen. So by the age of 16, I got into the dope business and I began to sell drugs, having a good life. You know, began to sell drugs and a lot of it. And then eventually I got hooked on the drugs that I was selling. You know, so after my, my mom and my stepfather separated. I went to live with my stepfather because I knew that I can do whatever I wanted to do at his house. So this one particular night, we was at my stepfather's house where we sold drugs at, and that night, the enemy had a plan to take my life. The Bible says that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and that night, his plans for me was that I die in my sins. Because he knows that if a person dies in their sins without accepting Christ and asking for forgiveness, there's no form for redemption. So this particular night, the enemy come in the form of two friends. They wanted the money, they wanted the dope, and me being the person I was back then with all this anger and this hatred built up inside, I refused to give him the money and the dope and the argument broke out. I ended up getting shot three times, twice in the leg and once in the stomach. 
Now, there's not a whole lot I remember about that night, but I do remember, uh, Eld, I do remember being in the ambulance headed to the ER. I remember being on the operating table and hearing the doctors debate over my life saying I wasn't going to make it. And hearing another doctor saying that, well, we may can save his life if we amputate his leg. But how many know that it's the goodness of God that lead us to repentance? So after going through a series of surgeries and flatlining several times and being in a coma for 24 hours, I finally made it out of critical care into intensive care. And <laughs> minister, while I was in intensive care, this person come to my bedside who I thought was a person at the time. She, he, he come to my bedside and he spoke these words to me. He said, you will live. He said, God will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. He said, trust ye in the Lord forever for in him is everlasting strength. Now, I heard the words that they were saying, but I didn't receive it because I had envy and I had revenge in my heart. I wanted to get back at those people who had did this to me. So sometime later, the, the, uh, the, I can remember the doctors coming to my bedside and they explained to me my injuries. They said because of the damage that was done to my leg, they told me I never walk straight again. I always walk with a limp. I have to use a cane to get around. They told me that there was an 80% chance I have to wear a colostomy bag for the rest of my life. But it was the goodness of God. It was the goodness of God that was leading me to repentance. So sometime later, I was, you know, I was laying up in my hospital bed, and I got to remembering, because prior to coming into the hospital, I had all kinds of warrants and all kinds of charges pinned against me, and I knew that the detectives were going to come and get me and haul me off to jail. And I knew that I couldn't go to jail in the, in the condition that I was in because I had too many enemies back then and I had no way of defending myself in jail. So I called family members of mine and they came and got me from the hospital. I ended up escaping from the hospital with a colostomy bag on one side, a catherine tube on the other side, the bottom of portion of my leg laying wide open, staples in my stomach and the upper part of my leg with stitches and now here I am, a fugitive on the run. So after running from the authority for several months, I found, and, and, and it's, it's, very, uh, it's very unique because I finally gave myself up to the authority. I said, I, I said, I can't run anymore. And it was on a Christmas day. And of course, I went before the judge sometime later, and the judge sentenced me to 10 years in prison. Now here I am in prison, and, but while in prison, I met this older gentleman who used to always talk about the word of God. You always talk about this man they call Jesus. How he wants to save our soul. Now I have heard the name before but I did not know him. I didn't have a relationship with him. There was no father and son relationship. There was no bond between us. I had heard that name before but you know but here I am in prison and he used to always give me books to read and material and scriptures to read and, and, and I was really drawn to the, uh, the, uh, the book uh, Paul book and I was drawn to all his writing because I was looking at Paul and Paul quoted some. He says that, for it is the sin that dwelled in me. You know, it's not me, but it's that sin that dwelled in me. And I was kind of like drawn to that scripture. And then I began to read other scriptures like the good that I would, I do not. But the evil that I would, not that I do. Paul said, if then I do that which I would not, it's no more I that do it, but the sin that dwelled in me. He said, I find then a law that when I would do good huh, tell me about it. but you know he used to give me these materials to read and he used to always ask me to come to his bible study you know back then we used to call them jailhouse preachers you know nobody really never listened to him but the man had some knowledge the man and, and I finally went to one of his bible studies and co-pastor he opened up his bible study with these words he said thou would keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee he said, trust ye in the Lord forever, for in him is everlasting strength. And immediately my mind went back to the night when I was in the hospital when the angel came and visited me. But, you know, here I am in prison. I still did not receive it. You know, so after being released from prison, which was by the grace of God, because I had all kinds of charges, all my charges was running wild from each other. And, you know, my lawyer got me back in the courtroom, got them all run concurrently, you know, with a flat 10 years sentence and did uh, 18 months and was released. But after being released from prison, after being released from prison, a real close family member of mine died. She was real. She 
She was real close to my heart. She was real young. But after she died, we we went to the funeral. And the pastor that gave the eulogy The uh, Reverend Lee E. Brown, he gave the eulogy and he opened up his eulogy with these words. He said, thou will keep you in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. He said, trust ye in the Lord forever, for in him is everlasting strength. That day, that day those words manifested so deep in my spirit and I received Christ on that day. And, 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 and um, it's weird because uh, me and my cousin, uh, we, we both actually got up. And, and we accepted our, uh, we uh, gave our life to God. Um, and, 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 and the thing is, the thing is, Pastor, that keeps me going now is to know that I can't, I can't go back. You know, because me and my cousin gave our lives to God together. Six months later, he went to Detroit and was murdered in the street. So, you know, it's, it's the goodness of God that leads us, us to repentance. You know, so now I understand I understand that what was happening in that road to repentance. I understand that the angel came and the, who came and visited me, she was the one that planted the word. The older gentleman in prison was the one that watered that word. But it was God. Ha, it was God that gave the increase. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, God.